Hello dear students, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you will be fine. My name is Engineer Nirma Sukhshan. I am lecturer in the Department of Technology, Saraj University of Science and Information Technology, South. As I am teaching you the subject Design of Hydraulic Structure, today is your lecture number 20. In lecture number 20, we will study about uh, the cross drainage works. So, coming to the topic, what is cross drainage works? In an irrigation project, uh, when the network of main canals, branch canals, distributors, etc., are provided, then these canals uh, have to cross the natural uh, drainage, river, like river streams, knowledge, etc., at uh, different points within the command area of the project. The crossing of the canals with such obstacles cannot be avoided. So, for this purpose, suitable structures must be constructed at the crossing points for the easy flow of water of the canal and drainage in the respective direction. And these structures are known as cross drainage works. Next is the necessity of cross drainage works. The watershed canals do not cross natural drainages but in actual orientation of the canal network this ideal condition may not be available and the obstacles like natural drainages may be present across the canal so the cross drainage works must be provided for running the irrigation system the at the crossing point the water of the canal and the drainage get intermixed so for the smooth running of the canal and with its design discharge the cross drainage works are required. The side condition of the crossing point at, uh, may be such that without any suitable structure, the water of the canal and drainage cannot be diverted to their natural directions. So the cross drainage work must be provided to maintain their natural direction of flow. Next is types of the cross drainage work. Uh, according to the condition, there are uh, three different types of uh, cross drainage works. The first type is according to the uh, the first type is uh, irrigation can when irrigation canal passes over the drainage uh, drainage uh, natural drainages. In this type one, we have two type of cross drainage works. Number one is the aqueduct, and number two is the siphon aqueduct. So these two type of structures are constructed when irrigation canal passes over the natural drainages. In type two, we uh, type two uh, the cross drainage works are constructed in case when the uh, drainage passes over the irrigation canal. In the first type, the uh, irrigation canal passes over the drainage, and in the second type, the cross drainage, uh, sorry, the uh, natural drainages pass over the irrigation canal so for type 2 the cross the type of cross drainage works are constructed number a is the super passage and number b is the siphon super passage these two structures are constructed when the natural drainages pass over the irrigation canal next is type 3 in type 3 the uh, natural drainage and canal intersection each other of the same way means that the natural drainage and canal intersection are on the same level for this type the cross drainage works which are constructed are level crossing and number b is the inlet and outlet so these two types of structure are constructed for type 3 uh, when the natural drainage and the uh, canals are on the same level Next is the selection type of cross drainage works. So, to select the cross type of uh, cross drainage works, different points should be kept in mind. Number one, uh, relative bed level. The relative bed level should be checked, and according to the relative bed condition, the type of cross drainage work should be selected. Second one is the availability of suitable foundation. Also, the foundation. Uh, of the bed should be checked or this foundation soil should be checked and according to the foundation the uh, type of cross drainage work should be provided third one is the economical consideration according to the economical uh, economical position 
or according to the economic, economic condition, the type of progeny host should be selected. Fourth one is the discharge of drainage. The discharge of drainage should be properly studied and according to the discharge of drainage, the type of progeny drainage host should be selected. Last one is the construction problems. So uh, all the types of uh, cross drainage works depending upon the above conditions, the construction problem should be studied and the uh, type of construction cross drainage work should be selected having less construction problems. Now coming to the aqueduct, so what is aqueduct? The aqueduct is just like a bridge where a canal is taken over the deck supported by piers instead of road or railway. As you can see in the figure, the uh, aqueduct is just like a bridge but in this case a canal is taken over the deck uh, which is supported by piers in, as in case of the uh, road or railway. Generally the canal is in the shape of a rectangular truck as you can see it is in the shape of a rectangular truck which is constructed with reinforcement concrete but sometimes the truck may be of the uh, trapezoidal section or trapezoidal shape this truck uh, this is known as the truck this truck uh, normally in a rectangular shape but uh, according to the condition of uh, this may be of trapezoidal shape an inspection road is provided along the side of the truck as you can see in the figure an inspection road is provided along the truck for inspection purposes the bed of the bank of the drainage below the truck is protected by a boulder pitching with cement grouting as you can see in the figure that uh, stone pitching is provided with cement grouting to protect the uh, bed the section of the truck is designed according to the full supply discharge of the canal also a free board of uh, about 0.5 meter should be provided for safety. The height of the section of the piers are designed according to the highest flood level and velocity flow of the drainage. The piers may be of brick masonry, stone masonry or reinforced cement concrete. Deep foundation like well foundation is not necessary for the piers. The concrete foundation may be done by providing the depth of the foundation according to the availability of the hard soil. Next is the siphon aqueduct. The siphon aqueduct, uh, in siphon aqueduct, the bed of the drainage is depressed below the bottom level of the canal trough by providing sloping apron or on both sides of the crossing. So, in siphon aqueduct, uh, the bed of the cross drainage, this is the bed of the cross drainage, is depressed below the bottom level of the canal trough below the canal trough by providing the sloping apron these are the sloping apron provided on both sides and it is depressed below the bottom level of the canal trough the sloping apron may be constructed by stone pitching or cement concrete these are the sloping apron these may be constructed of st uh, stone pitching or cement concrete depending upon the conditions. The section of the drainage below the canal trough is constructed with cement concrete in the form of a tunnel and this tunnel acts as a siphon. This section is constructed of cement concrete and this uh, section acts as a siphon. Siphon. Cut-off walls are provided on both sides of the apron to prevent covering. Cut-off walls are provided on both the sides. As you can see, cut-off walls are provided on both the sides to prevent this covering. Boulder pitching should be provided on the upstream and downstream of the cut-off walls. Boulder pitching is provided on the upstream and downstream side, as you can see. The other components like an ultra pierce inspection road etc should be designed according to the method adopted in case of the aqueduct. So uh, all the other components that is the canal trough, piers, 
inspection road etc should be uh, designed according to the matter of in any as in case of the aqueduct and this is the end of our today's lecture